Hey y'all, welcome to Geek Freaks. I am Frank and I'm here with John. Hey, hey y'all. And we got Squeaks. Hey guys. Uh, <laughs> that, it makes it worse when I'm like waiting for you to do something silly and then you do something normal. And then I'm like... I see the tense. I yeah. see the tenseness. <laughs> Let's see how I angry editor Frank's going to get. Oh man. <laughs> We have a lot to talk about today. We're going to be talking about um, She-Hulk and their future there. Uh, we got Jennifer Coolidge Ugh. joining Minecraft, New Jurassic Park, so many things. But we're going to first start with that Geek Box question. And Jonathan, we're going to go to you first on this one. What would your superhero costume look like? So this depends a lot on what kind of hero I am, what kind mm. of powers I have. But I think just being super generic and not knowing my powers, I'm going to go uh, with the Judge Dredd like, uniform. Especially from the newer movie, I think that looks super dope, and it's like, you know, uh, shows this like confidence and power and stuff like that. That you know, the innocent people can respect you, but at the same time, you need to strike a little bit of fear in the criminals. So I think that's a, a good balance right there. Uh, so I was kind of thinking like this, like a kind of like scarf, uh, cape thing that covers your mouth, more like a kind like of a soul anime Reaper, hero. back in the days. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Remember Soul Reaver? Soul Reaver PlayStation game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that one. Yeah. Long time ago. Okay, yeah. So kind of like that look, right? But I need spandex, right? And I need a crest on my chest spandex. that goes down to the nut sack, right? But it has to be 3D <laughs> pop out, okay? It has to oh pop out God. a little bit, you know? Yeah. Okay. And then I want my boots to actually be like in that latex suit, you know? Not like something that's like, okay, Superman, you got the blue outfit with the red boots. I need it to be all in sync, kind of like a Man of Steel type looking. Are, okay, so yeah. golden question then. <laughs> Are you guys wearing capes? We've learned from Incredibles, maybe not best. <sighs> are you guys wearing a cape? It's going to be like more of a, I'm going to go with like thick scarf thing. Thick you know? scarf. And I, don't know, I don't know, really don't know how to explain that. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, everybody's I say, super if, excited to hear about thick scarves <laughs> in the new DC movie coming up soon. <laughs> Watch out for thick scarf, man. <laughs> when you're about to fight, you throw it over your shoulder. <laughs> yeah. My mom did oh, it this. Yeah. business. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'd say uh, I'll wear a cape if I have flying uh, power, yeah. but if I don't fly, then no cape. Mm. Yeah, because the flying helps with like trajectory or something like that, right? I'm assuming it balances no, it or something badass, like that. Really. No, yeah, it no. just looks cool. Man. Yeah, it looks cool. <laughs> it yeah. looks cool. If you're gonna if you're gonna crash land, I guess you can like curl up into your cape, but uh, yeah. And unless you have the spawn cape, then well, I mean you don't need to yeah. fly. You just yeah. yeah, that'd be dope. Yeah, just be spawn. Yeah, yeah. That's good idea. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, let's go ahead and get into the news here. Um, let's talk about the Xbox Developer Direct 2024. This is kind of Xbox's new answer to E3. They're probably going to do multiple of these, but this is everything coming up this year. What I want to say right off the bat is I love that they were just like, here's some cool games this year. It's kind of what Nintendo does too. I'm so tired of E3 when we get like, check out this cool game. Elder Scrolls 6 announced, yeah. and it's yeah. not even in development yet. They just like yeah. waited five years to even start making that. Like we were just talking about it yesterday over beers. We might make this game. What do you think? It's like, no, yeah. we don't want to know. We want to know what's coming out in the next couple of months that we can actually play. Yeah. Don't get us all hyped and try to milk as much money you can out of something that isn't going to happen. Uh, as a podcaster, I do it all the time where I'm like, that is a great name for a podcast. I just need a podcast <laughs> idea now. <laughs> and hosts, because I'm yeah. tired of being the only host on stuff. Um, okay. <laughs> the big one here is we got the new Indiana Jones and the Great Circle Squeaks, oh, what'd you man. think about that, man? You look like you're hyped. Oh, man. Yeah, I am. I'm super uh, turned on by it. So I did not think <laughs> this game, I think this game being first person is what's going to like really uh, give us, um, I don't know. I don't know. Like the Indiana Jones feel, right? We're talking like Indiana Jones really? 1, okay. 2, like the original trilogy. Yeah. Uh, I think if they'd done it like Bethesda has before, where you're doing that third person view, it doesn't flow very well. And I think I've seen that. I mean, we really seen that, how I feel about it, is uh, Starfield. Starfield. Mm -hmm. When you're running and you're in that third person view, you look sloppy or you look like you're like sprinting and you're really not going nowhere. Yeah. So fair. but I think with Bethesda uh, going with the route of what they've done with like Wolfenstein and whatnot is really dope. I, I love some of the parts that they're really heavily going with um, non gun essential uh, combat with a whip and then him punching and grabbing him and throwing him. I'm like, oh, man, like, yeah, yeah. Like Raiders of the Lost Ark, man. Like. That's what I want. The first person actually yeah. is like the one negative I have about it myself because really? I'm like, I kind of want that Tomb Raider vibe, right? Where you're behind them. Okay. And, but they do show the parts that I was most concerned about, the scaling things and climbing things. Mm -hmm. They're going to back yeah. up into that third person for those things. So, okay. I'm, yeah, because I noticed that with the whip. 
the whip stuff, right? The swinging, whip swinging. Yeah. How like awkward that. would it be yeah. to, personally if you're swinging and you don't see like that fluid motion of you going over? So I don't know. To me, I think third person is kind of the only option for that. But so you yeah. love the traversal in Spider Man. How does the swinging in that work? Well, that's all third person. Yeah. It's all third person. Yeah. Oh, it is. Oh, okay. Yeah. Never mind. Yeah. I thought first person is like more immersive. So it seems like it'd feel more like you're actually there. Uh, but I don't know. I don't like when it changes yeah. from first to third back and forth a lot, too. That's kind of. Kind of breaks the continuity of the game to me. Yeah, I wonder how that is going to be. It could be done like like Gears of War does it. They go back and forth between third and first person. First person while you're yeah. no wait no you're over the shoulder the whole time huh? Yeah, yeah you are. I don't know. Yeah, yeah you're right, Jalen. Um, yeah. A lot yeah. of games do it in the cinematics, and that's fine. But yeah. you don't want to have breakaway cinematics all the time either because it still kind of slows down your game, your yeah. momentum in the game. Yeah. Uh, I I really like how this feels like it could just straight up be the movie. Like this feels like it's yeah. just a, a a short. Like like one of the movies, like it just feels like it could fit in there. It is fitting in between um, number two and number three. And I hope that that's the beginning of them doing that often, because I'm cool with the whole Indiana Jones franchise being a video game thing. Yeah. And you know what? After I need the bad taste of the Dial of Destiny out of my mouth. It's literally taking me. Uh, I think I'm on sit down number six to finish this movie. Yeah. So I think with this, this coming out, the way Indiana Jones is presents himself and how he has his mannerisms. And I think, you know, this is. Hopefully, I mean, this is a trailer, but hopefully we got old Indy back. Yeah. Don, you've been quiet. What's up, man? I, I haven't seen Dial of Destiny yet, but I was like, you know what? Uh, me and my wife don't watch like a lot of good movies together, but we oh, talked about, watch- well, we talked about watching. We talked about watching all this. the Star Wars <laughs> movies together and then yeah. she didn't seem very interested. So I was like, OK, scratch the Star Wars idea. Let's try to watch Indiana Jones together. And so we did today start watching nice. Raiders of the Lost Ark. Nice. And she seemed very interested in it. So I'm like, OK, cool. This might be a thing that we can you know, get all the way through. But now hearing that all this buildup is going to be to watch the new movie that I haven't seen, which granted, I haven't seen most of these in many years, so I don't remember yeah. a lot of it. But uh, I wanted to build up to see the, see the new one. And it's apparently majorly disappointing. So, well, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, really it's going to kill you before that, because uh, Crystal, what's the Crystal, 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 Crystal Skull? Yeah. That's the one that'll uh, kick you right in the nuts. Yeah, that was tough. Yeah, too. So, I would yeah, say yeah, Dial is better than Crystal Skull, though. <laughs> Right. Yeah, okay. but they're both good, like, good. here's your left nut, like Frank's saying, gonna kick you, and then they're gonna get right after is your right nut. They're oh, both gonna be kicked. Here's another franchise that does the exact same thing, Jonathan. Die Hard 1, 2, 3, perfect movies. Mm. Die Hard, mm-hmm. who cares what the names are for 4 and whatever else is after that? I don't even know. Yeah. Yeah. You watch them, right? It's like it's like they're they're okay to watch. They're just not gonna mm-hmm. grab onto you. Like, And we're gonna be talking about Jurassic Park later, man. I think Jurassic World too. Um, they're just not grabbing onto you like the old ones do. They're still decent movies. They're still definitely worth watching yeah. the new Indiana Jones. I think yeah. we're in a whole generation of that. I mean, how many Fast and the Furious movies are there? And Squeaks went to see every one of them, I'm sure. <laughs> he had early access wow, to one of them. The yeah. shade. The shade. <laughs> uh, um, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Next uh, topic. We <laughs> have, we've got Troy Baker, who's like legendary voice art artist, uh, Troy Baker. Yeah. Coming into play indie. Uh, first off in the trailer, he sounds like Harrison Ford. I think he did a hell of a job copying him. I would have uh, just thought that was Harrison if that news didn't come yeah. out about troy yeah damn and you know this is a great example of where we don't need to use ai and steal somebody's voice or pay for the rights to their yeah. voice That's hire like- another actor pay another actor oh yeah they, you know the the job is out there people are out there let's fill it and not use ai where people can do the work yeah there's impressionists uh i watch sometimes just on tiktok and it's like oh my mm-hmm. gosh this woman is doing like 20 different voices I'm yeah like, this is crazy there's this guy you that know? does like robin williams all the time and it's just like holy cow he's no. named robin yeah. williams um, yeah. The thing I want to mention about Troy Baker is he's actually a regular actor too. Just he's mostly known as this legendary voice actor. Um, he's he does okay. So he he plays Joel in the Last of Us video games. He's actually in the Last of Us TV show too. Uh, as, yeah, for a snippet for a little bit. I'm thinking, and this came to me while I was writing up the article about it. I think Troy Baker actually could replace Harrison Ford if they want to make more Indiana Jones movies. What are your thoughts on that, Squeaks? I know that you're kind of a loyalist to the old stuff. What do you think? Yeah, but I I like that, right? Okay, so I'm not opposed to that. Uh, I am for the old stuff, but even I know, like, okay, at a certain time in life, when I'm watching Harrison Ford, it's you're almost done, man. Yeah, you know? yeah, like yeah. in a nice way, like you're yeah. up there. Uh, but I think I like that pick. Uh, I like it better than like the Chris Pat or the Tom Holland kind of like mm-hmm. info we got before. Uh, but yeah, I'm down to see someone fresh, you know, not someone you see all the time. And you're talking about casting him as the same as Indy? Like, like this would be a really good time because he's going to be the voice of him now. So it's a really good time yeah. to be like, look, he's already part of the franchise. 
So let's yeah, transition. Man. Keep playing that voice. Yeah. And he's one of those guys that has like that super good experience, but yet still not very recognizable to people who don't know who he is already. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you don't have to worry about him learning the role or, or trying out somebody new that just might not be actually a good actor. I, and he, he's one of those guys too, where, you know, nowadays everybody checks your Twitter account and see what kind of past you had. He's been around long enough mm -hmm. to where he's been vetted by everybody already. So he doesn't have that problematic past that'll pop up on you and ruin a franchise. Like, you know, we have a Jonathan Majors right now in Marvel. It's he's a good plug in and play. I think he would be a really good option for that. And I he deserves something like that too, I think. Yeah, I'd love to see someone new coming into the game too, instead of just this like put a big name to it and yeah. you know, try to grab everybody to get in here. Yeah. Yeah, I think it'd also be good. Like you don't have to continue Indiana Jones that you know, you don't have to continue down the same path and keep telling similar stories with the same character. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it could it can change gears and shift over to, you know his one of his kids or something like that too we could pass down the torch yeah yeah they tried passing down with that crystal skull but yeah that was a flop and i thought shia labeouf <laughs> could have done it you know and then i watched it i'm like i, I still could see it but obviously you know outside movie life yeah he's a lunatic yeah, yeah. got weird for him yeah you know? he's amazing and lawless go watch lawless that is mm -hmm. his oh lawless. god such a good Oof, movie so good. Mm. um i right, mean i love them in fury and i keep preaching that movie so Oh, yeah, that's a kind of a newer oh, one, much. too, that he was actually in. That one is post losing really? his mind. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so next we're talking about Senua's Saga Hellblade 2. Uh, it has a release date, finally, for May 21st, again, this year. It's one of those things that was announced a long time ago, and we're just now getting it. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm going to try to play this the one in, with the, head, the Oculus, so that the whispers are, like, mm, extra scary. Because yeah. the whisper is the only thing that tells you what to do in the game. Doesn't have a Whew, man. Yeah, I play with the headset, yeah. and the, even that's scary. So I can only imagine if you're using an Oculus. Yeah, John, have you ever heard about this game? I have not. Honestly, Xbox needs to advertise it more because it is extremely good. It's really well crafted, but it doesn't have a HUD. And you're playing. Um, I think they said Celtic. I thought it was always Viking, but Celtic in a Viking world. Really, I thought it was Viking. You know, too. and it's one of those things in the history where I'm. Not, it's. I think it's a little bit foggy. Um, but yeah, the, the she has. Um voices in her head and they're the only thing that's telling you what to do you don't have a hud otherwise and mm -hmm. and so like you'll be like you have yeah. to dodge soon or something like that that's this crazy whisper that tells you that and you learn what it means mm -hmm. and then also the more you die yeah, the more good. this poison yeah. goes up your arm and eventually it'll get to your heart and you just the game's over and you don't mm -hmm. keep going anymore and so you have to you have to get better it's super great yeah that sounds really cool yeah so uh that one's coming out may 21st i'm gonna try it on like this squeaks are you gonna give that one a shot yeah, I get it. I mean, I probably started the first one like three times and I still haven't finished it. Yeah. And it's not because it's a bad game, not even close to that. It's just other games distract me. That's yeah. playing yeah. well with me right now. Oh, <laughs> uh, I know. Right. You probably see me like, what the fuck is this guy playing League of Legends now? After how That's all right. Me, me and Joe <laughs> just know. <laughs> me and Joe just know. It's like Daniel who's like, what the heck? Why am I not doing enough DPS? Because I haven't seen you in about two weeks. That's why you're not doing enough DPS. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's you. Um, Obsidian, which is an outstanding company, I'm a big fan of, they showed off a lot more of Avowed. And I remember that first teaser, we were like, this feels like it's just going to be Skyrim again. And I think it's just Skyrim. <laughs> it yeah. looks like it's basically Skyrim. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> uh, coming out fall 2024, they make Outer Worlds, they made Fallout New Vegas. This is going to be a slam dunk, and I think it's going to be a start of a whole new IP that Xbox is going to be able to farm. Oh, uh, no, no, no. no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I thought we moved on to the next one because you made that uh, mark remark about uh, Skyrim. So I was like, next, and I was like, well, what is I meant that in about? a good way. Like Skyrim is an Got amazing it. game, so I'm dead. I'm down for them to clone the hell out of it. Uh, okay, yeah, okay. I mean, okay. I'm not playing okay. Power World <laughs> because I'm a Pokemon fan. But yeah. Are you playing that? Did you see me play Power World last night? <laughs> is, uh, <laughs> this is why you don't see me oh on WoW. I'm jumping on every other. Are game. Are you actually playing that? <laughs> uh, I I'm in the tutorial. Okay. So we were kind of like. I was trying to play with somebody. We were kind of frustrated because we we're like, how do we buy each other? I think we're just in this tutorial phase yeah. and that's why we can. But uh, yeah, I'm playing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beating the shit out of these Pokemon and yeah. uh, just catching them. So he just feels cheap. Like, that's why I didn't want to get it because it doesn't feel like it has the polish that I would probably prefer. <sighs> man, yeah. And uh, once you download it, and if you download it and play it, you do feel like, man, I'm playing something on the PS3 oh, right okay. now. Um, it's got work to do when it comes to just movement and, and a couple of little things, sound. Like oh. what? Eight million copies already sold. Yeah. Them? That's just because it looks like Pokemon. Oh my gosh! Yeah, crazy. Yeah. Uh, the next two games we'll just say real quick is Visions of Mana and Ara: History Untold. We have those on the website with a little bit of a write up on them and the trailer for all of these games. 
I'll definitely be playing Aura. It looks like it's an elevated version of Civilization. I'm not. I know I'm not going to be good enough mm, for yeah. Visions of Man. I've never been good for any of those mana games. So, really? I've been bad at them. I'm pretty excited for this one. I, are you, I, I'm just bad at them. Is why I'm not well. crazy for it. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> I mean, this one looks pretty neat. Um, I like the colors in it and the artwork. Yeah. So, I think I might give this a try. And also, are these all Game Pass games? They are all Game Pass games. Realizing. Day one Game Pass games. That is crazy, yeah, man. Crazy. Yeah. I mean, I know, like, I've been on my Xbox a lot. Okay, the wife got me a leak controller, yeah. so I'm really like enjoy using that. And uh, and uh, it's like cool, right? You got a PlayStation, you get all the exclusives, mm-hmm. right? But nothing beats the Xbox deal. You could get an Xbox cheaper, and you could get the Game Pass. And I know I'm not getting paid by Xbox, damn it. But if you want to pay, hey, me, I'm, I'm not going to turn that away. Yeah. Uh, but Dan, you can't beat that deal on gaming. Like, if that's what all you care about is playing yeah. games, and you want the best, like, yeah, bang for your buck. Usually it's Xbox. That's like you were you're talking about getting me that Xbox S, and I was like, I'm gonna get an Xbox X next month, just because I'm gonna get Game Pass for yeah. the Oculus, and it's like okay for a little bit more you get mm-hmm. the game you get the system too, and so it's like yeah, I'll well just do that yeah. then because I'm gonna get it for the Oculus anyways. So yeah, for sure. Then I'll do it. Uh, all right, so guys, again, that's all we're on the website. Everything we're talking about, by the way, is on our website, and uh, check that out, guys. We have articles coming out every day. Uh, what's it called? A Night of the Seven Kingdoms. I almost forgot the name because I normally call it the Hedge Knight is actually going to begin filming this year. So there's like eight Game of Thrones spinoffs, and everybody's like, oh my god, they're all coming. So there's House of the Dragon, and now this are the only ones that are actually confirmed filming. And uh, we're going to be getting this, and it sounds like it's probably going to be, I would assume, maybe three seasons. Squeaks, you've read this. How many seasons do you think we can get out of this? Oh, man. I was going to say, the only thing coming is me with all this Game of Thrones news. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) (laughs) So... um, uh, Let's see. I don't know. Yeah, I could do three. Four stretching yeah. it. Two might be like, hey, I want more. And the only reason why I kind of agree with the three part is the fact that is this going to be on a rotation of other series? So we don't always see, uh, like super wait for the next one to come out the next yeah. season. So like uh, House of Dragon, right? It's it's twenty five or what is it for the next uh, release? Yeah, I, I think two. it is twenty twenty five. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. So I'm like, damn, by the, when we finished that and we got the news that that's how long it's going to take, we're like, holy shit, man. Even at 20, I don't remember when we finished it, watching it. 2022, 20? I'm almost positive. And June? you know what? I mean, now I'm thinking about be 2024. So maybe it is 24 then. So yeah, it's yeah. probably every two years. So if this was on Whatever. the opposite yeah, rotation, two years crazy. yeah, that would be really nice. Yeah, that'd be sweet. So hopefully we get into that uh, that phase, but not so much into like a like an era of Star Wars shit well, going out. But the Star Wars, Wars is whatever, a good example so. of that, right? Because we have the Mandalorian every two years, but in between that, we get Boba Fett and we get Ahsoka. And stuff like that. That's yeah, nice. yeah. I just want you know quality. Yeah. So, do you, no, I'm just yeah. Do you I mean, guys, I, know, so you guys, you've read this. Do you know? Can you give us like a real quick one liner of what this story is going to be about? Uh, the upcoming of a down and low life. You ever see Knight's Tale? Kid. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> okay. The safe. The safe. <laughs> Hey, I laid you It's up a night's tale. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Set, yeah. set in the... Uh, Try to be dramatic, thing. okay? <laughs> nice. Hey, but it's a phenomenal good. movie. Yeah. 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 I've read... I, I've, I've done the comic books, and you, I think, did the books. I think I'm going to go through and actually do the actual the books novel, now. Yeah. Or the book? Book, I think it's one yeah. book. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's, it's multiple comic book, books. Yeah. So uh, I'm excited for it just because it's... To me, I was, I was explaining it as like the Hobbit for Game of Thrones, where like Lord of the Rings is this massive work, and you can really get into it, and it's crazy. But the Hobbit just kind of is a smaller version of it, just introduces you to certain things without getting into the whole history of the world. I feel like that's what this is for Game of Thrones. Like, you're going to learn the name Targaryen, yeah. you're going to learn the name Stark, but you're not going to know about, like, all oh, the houses in the wall and da 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 You don't need to. Yeah. It's just about dunk and egg on the journey, you know? So for people that miss yeah. the boat, that hear all this Game of Thrones, oh, it's so cool, but they're intimidated to jump in, this would be a good starting point for them to just jump in and ride the wagon and see if they like this. Then they can go back and watch everything else. Absolutely. And also, it's a really good place for if you're like, I'm a little bit exhausted by everything I'm watching right now. Same mm-hmm. thing. That's, you know, nice. it's kind of nice to have, just have something that you're like, yeah, it's in the same world. But like, like we have a skeleton crew coming up for Star Wars. It's going to be about the kids going on like a Star Wars adventure. It's a nice little mm-hmm. side thing that I don't think that have too much of an impact on the, the grander story. Nice. Uh, let's talk about Marvel since we do that every episode. <laughs> we just got a word. From um from the actors on the show, uh, Tatiana Maslany, which plays She Hulk herself, the She Hulk is not coming back for season two. Uh, apparently, they just blew their budget, 
and they were like, yeah. they really don't want another one. And I think a lot of that is kind of the fan reaction, good or bad, has been just like overwhelmingly. Uh, it's it's been a lot for Disney to have to deal with. Um, I don't I don't know. To me, I thought this was not a terrible show. I mean, it, it was fun to watch. It kind of reminds me of what we were talking about beforehand, where it's like I don't think any of this really counts or matters for the Grand Avengers storyline. But you know, it's it's her doing lawyer work. I don't know. It squeaks. I know. What did you think? Yeah. You watched it all. Uh, I was actually kind of a, a semi fan yeah. of the show. I thought it was neat to have something different and not so serious. And uh, and it maybe kind of became a fan of She Hulk. I remember going to the comic book store and looking for these uh, special covers that I spent a little bit extra money mm -hmm. on than retail. But uh, it did introduce me to She Hulk a little bit better, and I do enjoy her as a character. But I am sending you, uh, giving you my resignation now. I'm fucking sick and tired of covering the Marvel. Okay, okay. I'm over it. I think they're trash now. I can't keep up with them anymore. So if you ask me Marvel questions on the podcast, I'm not the guy. All right. Ever. So, Jonathan, you got promoted to Marvel guy now. <laughs> nice. Just can't, I just can't do it. I just can't do I it. I watched, anymore. I think, two episodes. I, <laughs> well, that's uh, not a good sign. Until Blade comes out, <laughs> until Blade comes out, I, I, I just can't do it anymore. I can't do Marvel well, anymore. We've talked about so. it. I think Marvel's turning a new leaf. I think Marvel's <laughs> going to be the Marvel you want it to be real soon. Born Again is definitely the, the oh, one yeah. to do it to. So, so She Hulk to sounds like something to me, like how. Like just from the little bit that I know of it, they tried to. It seems like she has so much power, but they tried to kind of play it down as a grounded character and not such this big, you know, Ragnarok Hulk that we know in, from you know her counterpart. She seems like she would fit good in the you know, Daredevil realm, right? Just I think she's too strong like, for it. Uh, but she it, does she use her strength that much, or is she kind of, you know, uh, well, okay. more grounded? So, than so first Ragnarok off, Hulk? her and Daredevil do mm. have run-ins. Even in the show, Daredevil pops up because they're with lawyers. And so uh, okay. Matt yeah. Murdock shows up. Um, but, and, and that's probably the funnest interaction of them. But when they're fighting side by side, she is a Hulk. So like she hulks out mm -hmm. and you know, a little bit, a little bit too strong and stuff like that. I don't know. There's all kinds of problems with the series. I did enjoy it. I really disliked the ending because it accidentally made her the strongest MCU character yeah. possible because she breaks the, mm -hmm. oh, you'll hate this part, John. She breaks the fourth wall so much yeah, that she goes and that, sees yeah. essentially Kevin Feige and complains about Marvel stuff. And it's like, oh, yeah, that's dumb. Screw this. <laughs> yeah. 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 We did just this as a live stream it. watch along. Uh, and we're just like, I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> yeah. If you yeah. have one, yeah, I was just going to tell John. If that. you have <laughs> one solo character that can break the fourth wall, then that's fine. When he's talking to me, nobody else in his room should be able to see me. Exactly. That's it. Every, any other, you're, you just, you're tearing your, your box open. Like everything, there's no rules anymore if everybody can do that. It's just dumb. Yeah. Yeah. So I, it sounds like we're all in agreement. That this is probably best. That this thing isn't renewed for a second season. It definitely has, yeah. you know, something worth watching, but I don't think it has. Any. There's other shows that I think from the before phase of, of uh, the new Deadpool or I'm sorry, Daredevil that are definitely worth continuing forward. Loki, Miss Marvel. I think those are all valid. This one. Not so much. And then we'll hmm. not talk about Marvel for a while for squeaks. If you guys want to have a complaint? <laughs> yeah. I don't want to. <laughs> I just want to say I don't give a shit about your echo review if you're gonna have one. I, 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 I know. My I'm echo saying. review was was very valid. I think I did, I did a good job on that. <laughs> I'm not saying that you didn't do a good job. I just I don't care about. I, I, I'm assuming. Do you like the show? We'll just say that. I give it a seven out of ten. Okay, that's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, but you're very because the ending sometimes. was like oof. You know, the ending was real <laughs> oh, bad on that. Okay. Really? Yeah, because they changed their powers completely. Did you watch mm -hmm. Echo? She has powers now? No, fuck, God forbid, I will not touch anything. Oh, it's worth watching, I think. Just the ending is yeah, does not stick a landing in any way. So she gets powers now? She has straight up, like, the Avatar's powers. Not the, but, like, the way she's able to access her past to gain new abilities. I'm oversimplifying mm. it, but essentially that. She, and then at the mm. end, like, her and all her ancestors standing next to each other to fight Kingpin. And meanwhile, I'm just like, can Kingpin go fight Daredevil again so I could care about this yeah. character? <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of that. Okay, okay. Yeah, she's able to like channel some energy from her ancestors, and she has like their wisdom and their fighting skills and mm. stuff. There you go. Jonathan said she can like, way. shoot energy yeah, beams yeah. at her hand, kind of. <laughs> yeah. She does oh, charge man. up, like have heat power, or it looks like it's heat powers, but it's like she's accessing super strength. It's uh, don't watch it. Never mind. Never mind. Don't. How many it. fight scenes <laughs> did they? How many fight scenes did they play silent? Several. Uh, a couple like actually, that was yeah. Be a thing. Or, or, yeah. There are several like talking scenes, like where they're signing the whole time, and it's just quiet, which yeah. is a little jarring, awkward okay. if you're not used to it. Yeah, yeah but yeah. it's it's good to convey <laughs> what they're trying to convey, which is that this is how these people, yeah, you know, live. So. Yeah. <laughs> you think yeah. that's yeah. bad, Jalen? My for some reason, closed captioning wasn't working, 
So I'm really trying to figure out, like, oh, okay, hold on. I took one week of ASL. Let me try to master this. Right. All I do the letters. I know what Q, I know what K is. Okay, hold on. Right. <laughs> like, I did have some basics. I was able to chat for a little bit, and I forgot it all. Thomas was watching at the same time. I had to text him, like, do you have subtitles? Because I'm so lost, man. <laughs> oh, imagine if they didn't, and they expected people to go ahead and learn Just know and to that, be able yeah. to watch oh. it. Yeah. Every episode, I had to go the, back out and go back in for them to work. It was so annoying. Yeah. What I think would have been a great little ad, and they might have had it, and I d- wouldn't know, is if they did have every once in a while that somebody would like sign a joke or like a, a hidden Easter egg. Yeah, that'd be cool. They wouldn't translate. Yeah. Mm. That'd be, yeah, that'd be kind of cool. Mm. Yeah. That'd be funny. <laughs> like, I wish Loki was still on. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Speaking of Disney, let's talk. Okay. Now, I don't know if we're allowed to talk about this, but Lord, uh, Disney's Lorcana. Anybody care about that in this chat? I'm just wondering. Uh, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, so they're starting uh, a competitive uh, circuit now. If you're talking about uh, the Snow White Super Rainbow oh, card, yeah. So oh look at that. Right, oh, right on the good. ready. Right on the ready. <laughs> How much did that cost you, Squeaks? Uh, I actually got this in the box that cost 100 but this retails at the time, whatever, 275 <laughs> God. So that one card. So did you... Did you sell it? Were those gains realized? Well, no, yeah. because that was the one card I really wanted out of that oh, set. So it's, it's hard for snow. me to let it go. I have uh, a deck, so I'm not talking too snow. much shit, but uh, I am acknowledging <laughs> that shit should be talked about you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so the championship's coming in 2025, but starting this May, they're going to be launching a uh, circuit that's going to be at the local comic book shops. I really love how they do that. Our card shops. I love how they do that. And building up to the championship in 2025. Squeaks, do you have a stuff? Oh, dude, of course I have the stuff. I was the guy that you all or anybody hated that would hog all the cards to themselves. Yes, I had a deck built ready to go from day one while you guys struggled to get even a booster pack. So, yeah, I'm ready. If I get you <laughs> signed up to a local event, will you go and compete? Uh, dude, I'd probably be hella scared. But <laughs> yeah. I'm going to get you one of those shirts like a softball team. This is like sponsored by Geek Freaks. And then it'd be like, yeah. OK, yeah, <laughs> I'll have to. Then I have to. I don't have a choice at that point. All right, guys. Put a QR code, but make it really small. So we've got to get really close to him. Oh, really close. <laughs> yeah. The QR code's like right by his crotch. Yeah, just whisper in the ear, geekfreakspodcast.com. Geek yeah. <laughs> with, a, with a line, is a hash, they're like, quotes, I spent 100 bucks on Snow White. <laughs> just yeah. so stupid like that. It is a box. It came with a lot of cards, okay? <laughs> we know why you bought it, though. <laughs> For Snow yeah, White. damn, I did. Of course not. <laughs> So it's going to be building up and then it's going to be the Europeans are having their own circuit. We're going to have our circuit and it's going to be building up for the championship in 2025. Um, I do love how Ravensburger is doing this all in local shops. And even when releases happen, they releases in local shops first and then eventually it comes out uh, for everybody else. Uh, one of the things when you compete, the reason to compete in the first place is because you get a stitch rock and roll card for free, a promo card. That's crazy. For just yeah. competing. Well, then I have to, yeah, sign me up then, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, Squeeze is going to compete. He's going to be wearing that sponsored by Geek Freaks shirt on there. And yeah. um, I don't know, maybe we'll buy you like uh, a just, you know, card uh, protectors. That's how we'll sponsor yeah. you, maybe. <laughs> and then just say like official sponsor of Lorcana, Geek Freaks. I like to see Disney stop us. That's exactly what we're going to do. That's <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, Disney, shit. you know where I'm at. Um, but anyways, <laughs> so during this tournament, what I like is there's going to be new sets coming out. So your deck has to change probably as op cards are released. yeah because in february we have a deck and then may august and november we have new decks coming out um mm-hmm. again it's coming out to the card shops about two weeks before it comes out to amazon or anything like that um but yeah i you're hearing it now guys squeaks is going to be the championship champion and um he's headed your way he's starting in norcal and he's coming to you yep <laughs> like that idea <laughs> don't even try to test me okay yeah. it's already over when we sit down <laughs> uh, all right, some news that just came out today. John Boyega is to set to star in a Book of Eli prequel TV series. I can't wait. I love the Book of Eli. It's such a good movie. It's been so long. I can't even. Do you know when that came out? It had to be early 2010, okay. I think it was. I just remember okay, yeah. yeah. Such a phenomenal movie. And I, I was saying not too long ago, too, that it would be really cool to see like a prequel, a sequel movie to that, to that movie. But uh, a prequel series, I think, is even better. So yeah. I'm excited. And John Boyega is great. So it'll be exciting. I'm going to see him like acting again. I kind of felt like the way Star Wars, that drama with Star Wars is like, ooh, that might shut him down from acting from big, anything big. But this is a pretty good sized role. I think it's a good thing for him. Yeah. 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 And yeah. a very different character uh, than what we saw him in Star Wars. So it'll be interesting to see yeah. him, you know, see his acting skills flex for this role. Yeah. So I'm going to say spoiler warnings for Book of Eli. 
this you know 13 year old 14 year old movie if you guys haven't seen it yet but this, <laughs> the ending is very big twist and if you're thomas and you haven't seen this yet please turn away now because i'm going to be challenging oh, you to this yeah. at some point Shit, no remember what is the twist remind me i haven't seen ready it here comes the, the twist he's blind the entire time oh yeah okay sorry yeah. I was <laughs> thinking, like i knew that part yeah yeah okay it is crazy how good they conceal that or i mean they don't try yeah. to conceal it but how you don't recognize it until yeah. the very yeah. end and then it's like oh my god this is six cents all over yeah six cents yeah six cents six all over cent. the fifth cents <laughs> which is just <laughs> totally, wait a minute <laughs> <laughs> so, oh god if they made one through five that'd be great <laughs> great movies <laughs> So is he playing the same character at a different time? Or? He's playing Denzel. Okay. He's playing Eli. And okay. so what I'm wondering is, I think he was blind during the events of the apocalypse, right? I think I think he says like when he found the Bible, mm -hmm. which is kind of his whole thing, um, he found it like when shit was going down, if I'm not mistaken. Is that correct? I don't remember. Yeah, I, I haven't I, seen it so long. Yeah. He was, he's so good at reading in Braille, you'd think he'd have to learn that at a young age, not learning it post-apocalyptic, you yeah, know, like, yeah. but his fighting skills and all that stuff. It's like, I, I, I'm pretty sure it's, they might make it for this prequel that he becomes blind later because they can show better character development, stuff like that. But, uh, I, I want to believe that he was like blind at birth or blind at a young yeah. age. You think so? Because he's so, so adaptive to his environment that that's something you think, yeah. think like he didn't just like recently. So I'm hoping that, what we'll do is we'll start with him blind, kind of like maybe the beginning of the apocalypse or, or first he stepping out and we'll get flashbacks mm -hmm. to times when like, Oh, this is how I learned to, you know, shoot back. Cause that's one of my favorite things. Yeah. Is he always fights, but you always, when you're watching, you notice that he's never one that shoots first when somebody shoots, that's where he learns where they're at yeah. and then reacts to them. That's super dope. Yeah. yeah. Um, he's very daredevil level skills for sure. We need it. We need a daredevil meets book of Eli. Yeah. Ooh. That'd be perfect. <laughs> Squeaks is gonna complain because they they showed like a black screen at one point because it's just like them, <laughs> like Echo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, you um, just hear sounds. But then, <laughs> yeah. But then you see uh, the shock waves that they can hear, like when we see Toff's uh, hearing yeah. of motion. I like it. Far better example, John, because I was about to go to Ben Affleck's Daredevil. So. Yeah. Uh, his is good too. The falling rain. Oh, I remember that. The falling, the falling rain making the Sonic, uh, you know, I don't know. That, that was a pretty cool scene, though. That was a cool scene, yeah. All right, Squeaks, go for it. No, I'm just thinking, like, you said that you're freaking out about the closed captioning. So I'd be freaking out, like, what the fuck's wrong with my TV? Like, <laughs> yeah. I hear no picture. <laughs> Call on the uh, Geek Squad man. when you're trying to watch the new show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's uh, Squeaks yeah. in at Costco with his TV. Hey, this shit's broken. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sir, were you watching Book of Eli? <laughs> yeah. How did you know? It's Get some, in line with the rest. There's <laughs> some teenager that wrote it on a piece of binder paper, like, putting in the front of the Best Buy so people know. It. Like, yeah. chill out. It's just Book of Eli. Yeah. They did that for Star the Wars. Episode. One of the scenes went silent for a bit. They had to like put posters up in front of the when you went to the theaters. Like our things are not broken. It's just silent for this part of the movie. Stop freaking oh, out. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, yeah. We're kind of seeing this resurgence though. This like level of movies coming back, and at some point we should do like a top five for the movies in this era. But Book of Eli, we've got um, what's the other one? That's, oh, uh, uh, I Am Legend is getting a mm -hmm. series that's that's oh. going to be with Michael B. Jordan. And so uh -huh. I'm kind of down for it. There's a lot of good movies. I was thinking like a really good one to bring back from this era, Reign of Fire. Let's let's do a prequel oh, to that. Oh god, that'd be so good. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh at 28 god. years later, we're getting a we're getting a 28 years later movie too, which is gonna be following 28 yep. days later. So, oh, it's a good yeah. time. And and uh, what's his name has already agreed to be in it again. Killian Murphy. Oh, yep. Yeah, he's right. Incredible. He's I think he's already already. Said I he's, haven't yeah. heard that, so but like, I hope so. I, I'm and I'm hoping yeah. still for him to be Doctor Doom. Is that that Fantastic Four movie? The casting on that thing is getting insane. All rumored, quote unquote, but yeah, it's it's kind of everybody wanted. So that's perfect. Um, okay, and then talking about movies that we're bringing back, we've got a new Jurassic World in the works. This is going to be they're calling it Jurassic World Four, like the Hollywood Reporter that broke this story. Um, but they're saying it's going to be a new era of Jurassic Park. So, Jurassic Park first trilogy, Jurassic World second trilogy. This is going to be something new, Jurassic, and. They're bringing back the screenwriter for the first two movies, Jurassic Park 1 and 2, which at first I was like, sweet, Jurassic Park 1, super good. Jurassic Park 2, eh, not the greatest. Mm. So there's yeah. that too. Mm. Although Michael Crichton, the guy that wrote the book, I, if I remember correctly, he was kind of rushed to write the second book and even brought back people and stuff like that because he wanted to follow the movie, not his own book. So it was a little bit complicated at the time. Uh, what does it take 
for this to hit the same way as the original Jurassic Park and not like the forgettable Jurassic Worlds. What do you guys think? The suspense. They got to do a good job at like building up that kind of fear. We've we've seen dinosaurs, you know, come and go so many times. So it's kind of you you don't you lose that shock and awe. But when you can create like that fear of a creature you can't even see and, you know, then they finally show it and they do a really good job with, you know, practical effects and CGI, whatever, to make it look super realistic and intimidating. It's like, you know, like like we've talked about Jaws a bunch of times where yeah. you don't even see the shark for most of the movie. You know what it is and you know it's coming and you're afraid of it. That genuine fear it instills like we need that in a good Jurassic Park movie. Yeah, it's funny because that whole thing was yeah. basically an accident. They Jaws, the shark wasn't working well, so they had to do it that yeah. way. And it ended up making <laughs> Steven Spielberg a genius. You know, it ended up working out really well for it. Yeah. Uh, I want to uh, piggyback off that. Uh, I think uh, what it needs to be is it needs to be contained again, okay? Mm-hmm. And to a limited cast, and not so much of the, this massive theme park. Um, I'm just talking if they were to do the park thing again. I don't know. I don't know if this is like a Jurassic World and it's supposed to be different era, but know, in the same yeah. universe, because then it's like, okay, how are you going to do that? You're not going to do that again. But let's just say it is. Uh, with with like this almost like family friendly horror right like it's not too scary but there are some times like in the kitchen with the raptors and the two kids uh especially the t-rex outside you know in the rain with the jeeps mm-hmm. uh, but contained there's a smaller cast um it's eerie at times not a big blockbuster uh theme park joyride you know yeah so going back to die hard it's why die hard works best one in, in the early movies because it's just in nakatomi tower he's not sitting there it's a whole world that we have to do with like, no, make it to where you're trying to escape. make it a horror movie in a lot of ways, which I think yeah. Jurassic world fallen kingdom direct direction wise was super good. It was done by that J a Bayana. I want to say Bayona, um, did a wonderful job. He made it a horror movie, uh, inside that one, uh, mansion where they were selling the dinosaurs. And I think yeah. that was a really good move. Then, you know, it was still forgettable because of too much CGI. I think another thing is like, let's get some practical effects. I think that's going to, stand the test of time and uh, i think the cgi gets dated super fast nowadays because it's kind of cheaper in my opinion um so i would like to see that i would like to see them take it to the horror level again like you're saying john thriller and use more practical effects we're gonna be talking about practical effects soon and you'll see when we're discussing it that that stuff lasts for a long time yeah yeah what do you think if they go the opposite route and make this like a Jurassic Park meets Jumanji and it's in a, in a Jurassic Park video game? You'll fucking go off and die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what it could be like Ark, like you used to play, Frank. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not hating that idea. If, it, if they okay. made a spinoff that <laughs> a, was not then the Jurassic Park storyline, like, like a spinoff, mm-hmm. you know, whatever, uh, would be fun. <laughs> I don't want it to be like part of the main story, you know? Okay. Yeah. Because they went from small yeah. park to big park to they're free everywhere and then yeah they they can't just keep expanding unless they do dinosaurs in space we saw that with leprechaun we could see it with Jurassic clowns park. in space or whatever you know yeah, it's, yeah, it's funny that you said that in space right because in my mind okay what's another way to do it and i'm thinking of dino crisis if you wanted to make it kind of horrorish and you said the space thing in dino crisis three i believe they went in space and the dinosaurs were mm-hmm. like kind of futuristic but I can see it like, uh, okay, you're doing the whole survival with dinosaurs. But Dino Crisis, it'd be kind of interesting that wonder if they had to go back to the Jurassic World Park for some specific reason and they, they send a special team in, right? Well, then already from the back, I feel like you're going to get this like horror type movie, which they're not going to do because Jurassic Park is such a big name. It's such a family kind of mm-hmm. thing uh, in a way that they won't do it. But let's just say they do. Then right off the bat, you're like, okay, you know. They're fending themselves off from like eerie hallways or something, and a raptor just jumps out or some shit, you know? There's, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what you're going to do now. Or you could jump forward like a hundred years after they've already been free on the planet, and, you know, people have learned to like survive in tribes and stuff like that, yeah. how to defend themselves against raptor attacks. And, yeah. and then it's like, how do we retake our planet? Planet of the these creatures? style, then. Planet yeah. of the Apes, yeah. 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 That'd be pretty cool. I, I would like, maybe, maybe we have a, a, different company because we can go back to the whole like shaving cream situation a different company is like we've got this guys and it's a real kind of like arrogant billionaire it's like guys this is what they did wrong check this out i've got this whole thing yeah yeah. and uh, tries to do it his own own way and it just seems to work because it's all about like propaganda making it work but then on all we find out that i mean i guess that even that's been kind of done already with like the new generations got this now and the old generation didn't know what they're doing we already kind of have that but i don't know Mm. you're right it definitely needs to be contained to an island or something like that 
just Isla and Debla or whatever, just like Isla something else. And then it's, oh yeah, this is the one to the left. We just didn't know about it. Like what World of Warcraft does. <laughs> you add a little human testing, like, oh, we're not trying to create dinosaurs, but we do want to make people who have regenerative skin or something yes. like that. And then you got some mutant dinosaur people that are attacking each other. So early <laughs> Jurassic Park concept was that actually was was something a little mm -hmm. bit like that yeah so um i think yeah. aliens too maybe it was maybe i'm thinking of aliens but yeah it was was like oh yeah they're doing part human <laughs> stuff um yeah so that's that's an option that's definitely possible uh before we get into our top five is there anything from the list you guys want to bring up before we move on talk about uh minecraft at all uh yeah. for college yeah you want to talk about okay go for it yeah i mean I, there's not you know we got an announcement of an, another actress and it seems like this uh cast is going to Kind of be in a way of like this uh, Mario cast, right? Like star studded uh, in every uh, position. So, I mean, that's kind of neat. I mean, I'm not interested in the Minecraft, but this movie may pull me into that universe. I know you you two are huge Minecrafters. So, yeah, um, for me, if you can make a movie that's on the Mario level, then it's like, OK, I might be interested in getting on your server or whatever. And it's a it's a live action movie, and so we just got Jennifer Coolidge. Oh, it's live action. I know, yeah, there's a lot of people who are not realizing that. Yeah, it's live action. Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah. So I think it's gonna be closer to Jumanji Weird. than it is to Super Mario Brothers. I think. Uh, okay. Okay. Well. And I'll stay and off. I think most of the <laughs> most of the Minecraft players are like our age and younger, right? So I'm pretty sure this is gonna be like a lot of uh like child humor. Like it should be funny and fun Probably, and yeah. not taken too seriously. Which I think, yeah, yeah so I think like I if you look at those Jumanji movies, I think, I mean, don't go like that Pixel movie, but like Jumanji yeah. was, was that way where you could watch it and everybody could enjoy it together. Four quadrants, you know? Yeah. Um, did you enjoy yeah. it though? I love it. The Jumanji <laughs> movie? Did you watch you the new ones? You don't, you don't like Jumanji? the original one, right? Or No, the new ones. Oh yeah. Fucking garbage. Yeah. Don't I'm sorry. With Kevin Hart and Jack Black and The Rock. Yeah, and trash. And... Trash. Oh, yeah. The last one, but crazy to even touch that. Crazy to even touch that, but okay. Oh my god, those movies are actually okay. Well, we'll, we'll have a discussion nah, about that later. Anyway, <laughs> real quick, are you guys looking for? Are you guys looking forward to Bill and Ted? They're making a, the was it number four now? I am looking forward to them because they're just lighthearted. They're fun, and if you guys watched the Bill and Ted three, it felt like just another Bill and Ted. It didn't feel like it was too much of a break, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. And in three, they brought in the daughters. Uh, Do you think this is gonna kind of finish passing the torch or not have no. you know the original actors no, because like that. um i can't remember his name and it's in the article but um uh, uh, alex winter alex winter said like this is going to be you know it's it has to be me keanu reeves and the two writers that agree that this is worth making another one for so they mm -hmm. have so much passion and love for this project they're not going to pass the torch they're, they maybe add the yeah. daughters as like you know another character which i i think they did a great job on cult to a cult it but um mm -hmm. yeah i don't see why you'd want to pass the torch if it's something you would love that much so i don't think they're going to yeah. Uh, do you have any idea what you think the story might be like, or what? What do you think would be a fun, you know, no, new Bill and Ted kind of story with the daughters? Well, the last one did a really good job of kind of tying up the George Carlin of it all, with with them kind of going back mm -hmm. and trying to save, you know, anyways like that, and kind of, oh, we didn't become that band, you know, that they were supposed to be from the first mm -hmm. couple of movies. Now they could just kind of create a whole new problem. Maybe we have to go to like deep into the past. Bill and Ted, dinosaurs, mm -hmm. talk about Jurassic Park, like that would be hilarious, right? I'm thinking because the daughters are, you know, younger from our generation and, and whatnot mm -hmm. and uh, or not even my uh, <laughs> younger than us. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, they might have this new vision of like, you know, they care about correcting the past or stopping injustices. Or something like that. So they might be like, hey, we totally need to go back and like stop some of these bad dudes from the from history. And thinking like we have this tool. Why are we not, you know, like activist mentality? Yeah, yeah. Like, why are we not correcting uh, it, but then Bill and Ted are like, no, you're going to break time if you go around and mess with it like yeah. that. And so they're chasing their daughters through time, trying to, you know, the daughters will assassinate Hitler. And then they're like, oh, crap, how do we we got to appoint a new Hitler? <laughs> <laughs> kind of thing. Like we've got to put him back in place in time or something to, to fix or that's a terrible example. Dude, but, where's my Hitler? You know, <laughs> <laughs> right. And they're like, let's let's find another bad guy at a time where we could replace him with him or something. Yeah. Try to re reassemble time the way it was supposed to be. Uh, that would be no, yeah, that'd be interesting. <laughs> that would be interesting, yeah. Time, time hijinks is fun. There's also a level of us just not, because I mean, like, time is what they're most known for, but they also went to hell and heaven. Like, there's there could be something yeah. we don't know about, because... I mean, them playing chess with the devil is, is possibly one of my favorite parts. Or is it Devil Grim Reaper? Grim Reaper. It is like one of my favorite things yeah. from the old movies and stuff. So I think we can get them kind of breaking something we haven't thought about before. 
Just another one where we could take it to space. Yeah. They haven't been there yet. Hey, Tron 3, matter of fact, just started filming, which, you know, I'm not... I'm excited for oh, Tron, really? yeah, but I'm not excited for Jared Leto being oh, here. Oh, yeah. But, but that's another thing. Maybe they go into, uh, like, the time-space thing and, like, I don't know, they're stuck in time itself or something. There's all kinds yeah. of things they can do with it. Yeah. Trapped in the space-time continuum. <laughs> it's very much a gummy-forward movie where you should be watching it with a gummy, I think, to really experience it all <laughs> in its true form. All right. All right, guys, so we're going to do top five. It's coming out in two days from the release of this episode just because we're going along on the tooth. So check out Top 5 Practical Effects coming out very soon. Thank you guys very much for hanging out with us, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.